This is a demonstration of how to use the Perkin Elmer 341 polarimeter. When you come to the instrument, it should be off, so the first thing you want to do is turn it on. Uh, after you turn it on, it should go through its initialization and warm-up procedure. If you're measuring the normal wank, wavelength, which is uh, 589 using, using the sodium lamp, it won't take very long to warm up, and pretty soon sure it should show zero degrees. If it's showing something slightly different than zero degrees, you can re-zero it just by clicking on zero. Um, one thing you can check is the energy. So if you press the energy button, you can see the energy, and that's how much light is getting through the system. So uh, more energy will give you a better signal because there'll be less noise. Now if you're doing another wavelength, uh, you'll probably need to use the mercury lamp. So to do that, what you would want to do is click wavelength and then use the arrows to select a different wavelength. So for example, let's go to 578 nanometers, hit enter. It will switch to 578 nanometers and then it says the mercury lamp is switched off. So I'm gonna press the mercury button to turn on the mercury lamp, lamp igniting. Now be aware that the mercury lamp takes a long time to warm up. So if we look at the energy over here, you'll see that it's quite low and that it's slowly ramping up. So you'll probably want to give it a good five minutes to warm up before you try to take any measurements if you're using the mercury lamp. But normally we just use a sodium lamp. So I'm going to turn the mercury lamp back off. And then we're going to go back to the standard wavelength. And there we go, it's ready to go. Okay, so to uh, measure the rotation of a sample, you need to put it in a polarimeter cell. The polarimeter cells are 10 centimeters long. There's different diameters of cells. Uh, this is one holds 10 milliliters. Um, larger ones will allow more light throughput and a more accurate measurement, um, but of course they use more sample. So uh, you'll want to fill the cell, and you want to make sure there's no debris in there, there's no bubbles in the cell, and uh, once you've got the uh, sample in the cell and filled, then you'll want to put it into the instrument. So you open the door. The larger cells can sit directly on these um, rails here, but for the smaller cells, you'll want to use this aluminum holder and just put the sample cell in the holder, and close the door, and it will adjust to figure out the rotation. This is a sample of uh, glucose, so it should have some uh, significant rotation, but uh, we don't know the concentration exactly, so um, we don't know exactly what the rotation should be. Okay, so we've got the reading. Once you've got the reading that you want, if you uh, want to try to get a more accurate reading, one thing that you can adjust is the integration time. This is how long it integrates before it makes each uh, measurement. So we could go from two seconds to let's say five seconds, and that may allow a more stable reading on the rotation. Okay. So uh, once you're done, you'll want to take out your sample. Let it go back to zero. If it doesn't go back to zero, that may be an indication that there's a problem with the instrument. So let me know if there's a problem. But in this case, it went back to zero. So we're fine. And then you can shut it off. And please log your usage on the clipboard. We don't normally uh, require you to reserve time on the website to use this, so if you come up and use it, please don't forget to log your time.